determine the configuration at this stereo center. Dots in for the directly connected atoms. There's a four way top. So let's list what each of the atoms is connected to. This carbon is triple bonded to a carbon that counts as three separate carbons. Now, this carbon is bonded to three of these groups. So it's bonded to three carbons. This is also bonded to three carbons. This carbon is bonded to three carbons, but if that's not obvious to you, maybe we should actually write out this condensed notation. Always expand condensed notation if you're finding it confusing. Now that confirmed that this carbon is attached to three carbons. This carbon is double bonded to a carbon and a hydrogen. The double bond counts as two carbons. And this carbon up top is bonded to a carbon, a carbon, and a hydrogen. Well, now we've got two ties. This group on the right is tied with the group on the bottom. They have three carbons each. And the group on the top is tied with the group on the left. They have two carbons and a hydrogen each. So now let's deal with these ties one at a time. Let's start by just focusing on the group on the right and the group on the bottom. So we're going to focus on the bottom group and the right group. So we have to move this dot one atom further out. Let's erase our work. And let's move this dot one atom further out. Now, it doesn't matter where we move the dot out because each of these three groups are identical. I'll move the dot out over here. But it doesn't matter. what You could put it down here if you wanted. It's identical to this group over here. Now, what are the three things that this carbon is attached to? Well, now we have to use what we learned on the previous example. Um, we have to go backwards, back towards the um, stereo center along the two pi bonds. So we go back along the first pi bond to count a carbon. We go back along the second pi bond to count a carbon. We don't go back along the sigma bond. Instead, the third atom just comes from this hydrogen. Go back along, sigma, go back along pi bonds, but not along sigma bonds. And this carbon is attached to a fluorine and two hydrogens. Well, the first atom in this list beats the first atom in this list. So this bottom group gets the number one priority, and the group on the right gets the number two priority. Again, we see the importance of writing stuff down and being meticulous on difficult problems. I think a lot of people get into the habit of assuming that triple bonds always win. Some people might just look at this and say, oh, this is single bonded and this is triple bonded, so this group on the right is going to win. But you can see that's not how it worked out. Um, so you have to be more meticulous um, to avoid falling into traps. Uh, even though this was triple bonded, it was actually a lower priority than this carbon down here that was single bonded. Also, uh, some people might assume that this group up here has to have the highest priority because it's got an iodine on it. Iodine is better than anything we have down here, but of course, we never even got so far, we haven't even gotten close to putting that iodine into play. Um, before the iodine ever got into play, we'd already seen that the right-hand group and the bottom group were going to be a higher priority than this group on the top. Now let's erase our work for the bottom and for the right, and shift over to the top group and the left-hand group. So here on the left, I'll erase the dot and move the dot one step further out and erase the list. And here on the top, I'll erase the dot and the list and move the dot one step further out. Now, we could have moved the dot further out along this path or along this path because they're identical to each other. So it doesn't matter whether you put the dot here or here. Just pick one. What's this attached to? Well, we have to go back along the pi bond and recount this carbon. We go back towards the stereo center along the pi bond and recount this carbon. We don't go back along the sigma bond, but we can go further out from the stereo center and count this carbon, and then there's a hydrogen carbon, carbon, hydrogen. And over here, this carbon is attached to a carbon and two hydrogens. 
And of course, we would never go back along the sigma bond and recount this carbon. We don't go backwards, backwards, closer to the stereo center if we have to go back along the sigma bond to do it. Well, the first point of difference is at the second atoms in the list. The second atom in this list is a hydrogen, and the second atom in this list is a carbon. Carbon beats hydrogen. So over here on the left, we have the number three priority, and on top, we have the number four priority. Let me point out again that these iodines might easily have misled you. Um, notice that even though this has three iodines here and three iodines here, it ended up with the bottom priority because the iodines never came into play. Um, before we could even put the iodines into play, we'd already determined that this group had a lower priority than any of the other groups. So we just got some more practice with the idea that we learned in the last example. When you are listing the three atoms that are connected to the dotted atom, um, you need to go backwards, back towards the stereo center to count um, any atoms that are connected by pi bonds. But you should never go back towards the stereo center to count an atom that was connected by a sigma bond. The number four priority is on the vertical line pointing away from us. So there's no need to make any swaps. We don't need to make any swaps. We just look at the configuration on the page. 1 to 2 to 3 here are arranged counterclockwise, which is S. And there's no need to cross this letter out because we haven't made any swaps. So the correct configuration of this stereo center is S.